So you want to build a 100k portfolio. Okay then. In this video, I'm going to give you some tips and strategies to get there. And while I might primarily focus on dividend stocks, this will work no matter what your investing strategy is going to be. And these tips should help you generate some passive dividend income as well as long-term capital growth. Let's go. So the first step is to just break it down into milestones. I like 10K milestones, but you could make it even smaller because that 100K figure is kind of intimidating for a lot of people. So I want you to break it up into smaller goals along the way. And make sure each time you reach one of those milestones that you celebrate it. Not by spending all your money though. <laughs> this is more about mindset in the beginning because 100K is going to take you a little bit of time. So you want to reach those little milestones along the way just to keep you more motivated. And once you reach that first milestone, then you reach the next one and so on. And remember that each step is going to be a little bit easier than the first. Because eventually it does snowball. Like they always say the first 100K is the hardest. Well, the first 10,000 K is the hardest, actually. The first $1,000 is sometimes the hardest. But once you get going, it does start to snowball and it does get easier over time because those dividends start coming in and the capital growth will start to kick in. Now, I've said this before, but consistency really is the key. And a little bit of patience along the way as well. Both time and consistency is going to help that compounding effect start to do its magic. So pick an amount that you can consistently invest each month. That's gonna be different for everybody. Some months you may even be able to invest more than that, but just a figure that you're comfortable with that works within your budget. I'm going to assume you've already opened a trading account. If you haven't, go do that. Because what I want you to do now is see what the trading fees are. I always like to keep my trading costs at about 1% or less. That means if your trading costs for each trade is going to be around $20, then you wanna make sure that you're investing around $2,000 each time so that those trading fees don't sort of impact your profits. Now, I assume you're not going to be saving $2,000 each month. So whatever you can save each month, put that into a high yield savings account until you reach that figure. Then when you reach that, you put it into the market. So that probably means you're only gonna be investing a few times a year and that's perfectly fine. Now in the beginning, it's a really good idea to reinvest those dividends because that's gonna help with the compounding effect. Now a lot of companies and funds will have a dividend reinvestment plan, which means they'll be buying more stock for you whenever those dividends are due in around what the dividends are worth. And sometimes the extra will carry over to next time. You can either do it that way through the plan or you can take the dividends and put that back into your savings account ready for your next parcel of shares. It doesn't matter which way you do it, it just depends on whether you want to build up that company or you want to build up a new company. But reinvesting those dividends in the beginning is going to make things a little bit faster. So understand that the market does fluctuate, so I want you to ignore this. Just know that the market price, whatever the price is for that day, is based on investor sentiment and how they feel about that company on that particular day. And this can change from economic conditions, what the company does, and sometimes just how an investor feels on that day. You gotta remember that it is a marketplace and it is dependent on how investors feel, what that company is worth. So ignore this, ignore what the price is doing on a daily basis. We know that the stock market as a whole over the long term generally does go up, which is a great thing and why we like it. Over the past 10 years, the ASX 200 has averaged about 9% per annum, which is great. And just invest when you have the funds to do so. What this means is if the price is down or when the stocks are on sale, you'll be able to buy more at that lower price. And when the price is higher, you'll be buying less. So it all averages out. And that way you don't have to think about it and it's gonna be way less stressful. Now, before you start buying, you really need to understand what your risk tolerance is going to be because that's gonna be different for everyone. I talked a little bit about this in my last video on diversification, but it really comes down to how comfortable are you with buying single stocks versus ETFs? You really need to understand what you're most comfortable with. Know that before you start buying things because you want to have a clear idea of what you are most comfortable with investing in. I always say that the best portfolio is the one that has less stress and allows you to sleep at night. So if you haven't started investing yet, what is the first thing you're going to buy? Now, I usually recommend beginners start with an ETF just because it's much more simple than buying single stocks. Plus, because of the instant diversification you get with a good ETF, there's kind of less risk than buying single stocks. There's also a lot of great general index ETFs. There's VAS, VAS, there's IVV, there's, there's A200. If you're looking for a dividend focused ETF, then I really like VHY. There's a bunch of really popular and really good just simple index ETFs that you could start with. So an ETF is going to give you that diversification because it's holding 100, 200, 300 companies. And usually it is weighted towards some of the bigger companies. So you do get those benefits. Once you've already started, you need to decide whether you're just gonna build that ETF or get a second one, or you're gonna buy single stocks. Now you absolutely don't need to invest in single stocks. You can stick with ETFs and that's perfectly fine. A lot of people actually prefer this. I actually prefer single stocks, but that's just a personal preference. There really is no right or wrong answer here. They're completely different ways of investing, but 
it just comes down to personal preference. But if you are going to invest in single companies, then you still want a little bit of that diversification. You don't want to be over diversified holding 50, 60 companies because then you might as well just buy an ETF. But I think a balance of around 10 to 12 to 15 companies is just about perfect. Go do your research upfront before buying and just put them in a watch list. Have 10, 15 companies in a watch list of companies that you're interested in buying in the future. I do regular research videos on different companies that fit my criteria as a dividend investor, which are usually companies that have a dividend yield of 5% or higher, have stable dividends, have capital growth, and usually have low levels or manageable levels of debt. I still have a watch list of potential companies, although mostly I'm just adding to the companies I already hold now. So each time you're ready to invest that one or two thousand dollars, go and have a look at the companies within your watch list and see which one might be the best one to buy right now. Some of the companies might be great companies and they're slightly down in price, and if they are, that's great. That might be a signal to buy that one. Just go and look at the monthly chart of the stock that you're interested in buying and see if there's any patterns. They might dip in price in the middle of the month or the end of the month and then go back up and they repeat this pattern over and over again. So sometimes it's worth just knowing the pattern of the company. Not all companies will have a pattern, but some do. And sometimes you can take advantage of that. But once you buy that stock, get ready and save up for the next one. Now it's time to really hone in your focus. When you've reached your desired level of diversification, it's now time to focus on the stocks that you already hold. I like to build up the best performers within my portfolio, which changes over time. And that's what I'm focusing on each time I'm ready to invest again. Other people like to put an even amount into each company. I don't do it that way. I tend to focus on the best performers, the ones that are giving me the best dividends or the best growth. But usually over time, this changes anyway. So it does sort of even out. But definitely I have more money in some companies than I do in others. And as you're doing this over time, you're actually automatically adjusting to the performance and market conditions over time. So how long is all this going to take? Now this is going to depend on two main factors on how fast you can build a 100k portfolio. It's going to depend on how much you can invest each time and the time in the market that you're investing. So even though the ASX 200 index is growing at 9% per annum, it doesn't do this every single year. Some years it's higher than that and some years it's lower. That's just the average. So the longer you invest, the more it's gonna even out and hopefully grow doesn't matter because that time is going to pass anyway. And just remember, it's going to be way harder at the beginning than it is at the end, because over time, you're going to be getting those dividend payments, which you can either reinvest or put into your savings account so you can buy more shares. And of course, over the long term, you should be getting that capital growth as well. All of that is going to start snowballing later. So it's much easier later than it is when you first start. So that's really it. Focus on strong companies or ETFs, whatever you feel more comfortable buying. Keep investing consistently, whether the price is up or down. And if it's down, it's on sale. Don't stress. And really the main key for getting that 100K portfolio is just time in the market. So there are my tips and strategies for getting that 100K portfolio. Good luck and happy investing. Bye.